Alright, fast forwarded this part right here. Because this is really just me making a weird little slime animation. And really struggling with the editor here. <laughs> There's a very good reason that I prefer a sprite over the built in editor. This one's fine, but listen, y'all, I just, ugh, it's not for me. Now the flickering, of course, looks insane. It's gonna look better when I get the frame rate correct. Next, I'm just copying that exact same sprite, adding a couple frames, and basically rotating the slime. And that's going to be his uh, walking animation. Now, when I did this, of course, you'll notice uh, I rotated him the wrong way, or rather, I set the wrong rotation for how I used it. It'll make sense when you see it. But honestly, I think I'm just going to keep it. That's just uh, that's what's what the slime do to move. Also, if you're wondering why I have like the ASMR voice, it's because I don't want to be too rude to my lovely uh, wife, but it is like midnight right now. Anyway, uh, finally almost done with this slime. Again, I really don't like this editor. I'm just kind of fixing the eyes. Just so everything kind of looks even. And then I go back and fix the uh, first frame. All I do is just kind of blur it a bit by rotating it by like a degree. And that's just me being a little bit neurotic about a thing that doesn't matter. Much like, well, middle school, right? Right? Alright, so we're back to full speed here. I'm not fast forwarding this part. So, first things first, going into my object, opening it up, and I'm showing off that because I edited the sprite already, my idle pose is different now. Now I do the little squishy thing as an idle move. But, of course, we're here to make it so we move when, well, when our actual sprite moves. Do we want it to essentially do a walking animation when it's walking, right? Cool. So what I'm doing is basically attaching a set sprite to the movement key. So for my key down A, I have moving to the left. And then that also makes my sprite change when I move to the left. Now before I fix the next thing, I did change over the uh, key down to the right. Now I think one of the first things I did want to change was, let's see, ah, my facing I believe. So I want to make sure that my sprite is facing the correct way when they move. If they move to the left, they should move to the left. Move to the right, they should face to the right. And cha-cha real smooth. So. What I'm doing here is making a new variable called facing and what facing is going to be is basically a value of either one or negative one and we're going to apply that to our horizontal scale 
that's not going to do well normally what that does is saying if I have a horizontal scale of one it just looks like a normal scale um, if we were to go somewhere between zero and one we would see the horizontal scale shrink uh, now if we have a horizontal scale at negative one that just means our sprites completely turned around it's mirrored uh, on the x-axis um, and that's what we're looking for by having it be one or negative one and that process will show up here in a second so what I'm basically doing is saying uh, key down for A is going to turn our facing into negative 1. And because our step event is saying our facing and our image X scale, our horizontal scaling, are the same. Or they will be once I make this step event. So yeah, what I'm basically doing is taking this code block right here that we had in the create event, and we're just going to put in our step event, because honestly it's redundant to have it in both, we really just need it in the step event. Redundant's a big word, look it up, it's a good one. So we're basically saying every step of the game we're checking to make sure what direction we're supposed to be facing. So pressing enter on our dumb game, and we are indeed changing some directions. It doesn't quite look like it right now because, well, it's a really badly made sprite and it's rotating incorrectly, but we are indeed facing the correct directions. But now we are heading to probably one of our first hurdles in object states, which is returning back to our other states. Now we're going to do sort of a real simple version of it. There's going to be a much more in-depth version of it next semester when we start talking about platformers uh, we start talking more about object states with that but for this one we're good to go ahead and kind of do the uh, simple method or uh, what I would probably call the more cheatery method it's okay though I'm not gonna tell anybody I only have like 115 subscribers Alright, so what I'm doing is making a key up event. So we have a key down event, and that is what tells us to change our x axis. Now we're going to have a key up event that's going to tell us what do we do when we stop pressing A, when we take our finger off of the A key. So what we're going to say is when we take our finger off of the A key, we want to switch our sprite back to what we had before. Or not necessarily what we had before, but our sprite that exact uh, idle sprite so key up a we are going to hopefully realize that we have a little set sprite block right there there it is and we're going to change ourselves to idle because right. i'm lazy we're just going to duplicate this and we're going to make it our key up D event or left right or I don't know maybe your some weird psychopath uses the numpad numpad four and six I don't know kids y'all do some crazy stuff with the game but anyway let's test this out we're moving and when we stop look at that when we stop we stop and we idle cool well hopefully guys this is working for your game as well like I said, we are going to be going a lot more in-depth on uh, object states and things of that nature, um, but this is sort of your uh, gateway into more advanced stuff. Uh, anyway, hopefully your games are going really well. Can't wait to see your Santas.